Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and X-Plane 11. For this flight I'm in the Flight Factor 757, a very payware plane as you can see. Very detailed, very clickable, all sorts of stuff going on and very nice of course. And I'm flying from New Orleans to Atlanta, which is a fairly solid flight. Though our runway ahead of us is a little bit bumpy it looks like and it's raining right now. As you can see we've got actual rain effects on the windshield. Uh, outside I've got a TWA livery. Can't really see the rain here but it did say stormy in the weather conditions when I was setting up the flight and that is the real world weather. Gonna put a little bit of flaps here but not too much. I'll take a little bit of time to Come up. I think I'll uh, take it slow off of this bump before uh, really revving up. So I'm going to release the brakes and sort of taxi through that bump. If we don't mind. Uh, let me start with the Apollo 13 audio. Why don't we tram with the and again, they're getting close to Earth. Uh, well, entering Earth's atmosphere and everything. Okay. Well, okay, throttle up. I love the TWA livery. This T T T TWA livery in particular. So nice. Okay, we are off. There's a weird spike there. And we can see the rain now, little streaks there, sort of on the water especially, you can see. Oh, I actually turned too far south. Well, we got a good look at delivery there. I wonder where all the buildings are at. We really can't hear the audio over the engines right now. Um, I wonder if inside the cockpit there's some audio setting thing. Uh, maybe the pad? Okay, uh, volume. Let's try that. Well, oh, New Orleans. Uh, 
going the right direction there, guys. I went without the winglets and it gives you a choice between the Rolls Royce and Pratt and Whitney engines, these other Pratt and Whitney engines. I don't think TWA had the Rolls Royce ones. Well, this is one plane that I'll continue flying in X-Plane 11, that's for sure. Uh, even with Flight Sim 2020 coming out. We still can't really hear them talking very much. I'll boost them a bit maybe. Hold on. I want to make sure that my voice still comes through. Um, oh, cockpit, yeah. Let's see. Whoa, that's a weird sort of effect on the windshield there. Okay, curious. Advanced so sound, maybe. Now, right? um, outside engine volume. I think that's yeah, I'll be better. Okay. So I think we can follow a interstate up, or a series of interstates. We're basically following Interstate 10 right now. <laughs> I'm still doing uh, road following here. IFR meaning I follow roads. But um, to our left right there is Interstate 10. Well, oh, the green sure looks nice, the Louisiana bayous and all the rest. And we are going to briefly cross into Mississippi here. Haven't really done the best ascent, to be honest. But 
We'll pass by Stennis Space Center. Though at this site, it's not going to be particularly detailed. In fact, uh, I think the complex that her nose is Stennis. Apollo control coming up on six minutes. Maybe not, maybe a little further along. This burn performed with the uh, backup guidance system aboard uh, Aquarius. The burn uh, retrograde uh, will prov provide a delta velocity of three feet per second uh, with a predicted uh, burn duration of 21 seconds. We're at 137 hours and uh, 34 minutes into the flight. Uh, I think this is it. Uh, what we're about to fly over here is Stennis Space Center. that bunch of buildings and again uh, interstate 10 to our right that there burn duration is 23 23 seconds not 21 seconds we're at uh, 137 hours uh, 35 minutes into the flight uh, we show Apollo 13 at uh, 38,303 nautical miles away uh, from Earth and uh, with a velocity of uh, 10,045 feet per second. Less than five minutes now away from scheduled time of ignition. Guidance, how are you looking? He's looking pretty good. Well, he's coming back up, uh, driving a pitch back down. Okay. He still has to send the body exit to line. He'll probably be doing that as soon as he gets back in attitude then. How you looking, Control? Looking fine, Flight. Still about one point. Darn nine. cloud seam. Yep. Well, at least this side is fine. So, Mississippi. Lots of Mississippi. Oh. Well, okay. a tiny corner of Mississippi, but still. Have you seen your body access line yet? Okay, here's about three minutes to go, we're all right away. Okay, Roger that, Jim. Need to get those data entries in, Mike. Yeah, Capcom, we should, uh, I believe, have gone through our body access line, I should like. And, uh, Flint and Aquarius Houston, uh, Roger that, and we're standing by for your body access line and your, uh, 0404 405 406 going towards us. Okay, uh, you did ask me before, Joe, to go up 400 plus 3, which I did. I assume you had changed the script again. What was it? You said you should have asked him to go 400 okay, plus 3. Okay, let me just three. check that we're not passing the red line. Maybe I should get some defrost on or something. Okay. So that's two minutes away now from schedule time. Uh. At least, you know, the pressurization worked automatically. Usually the windshield controls are like... Window heat. Okay, well they're on already. Okay. Could try windshield wipers, but probably not necessary. Okay, well, we are not going over speed. Mach 0.78. Okay. 
so we should keep it around here. 30 seconds. Roger. This is Gulfport and Biloxi. Ten seconds away now. Okay, it looks like we had a minus the point two bias. Four seven eight, we're burning. Copy that, Fred. We're done. We're burning. Five. Fred Hayes reporting that the burn is underway. Right. We're at 137 hours, 40 minutes in the flight. So at Mobile, we'll uh, start taking, it looks like, Interstate 65 up to Atlanta. Yeah, okay. Maybe. Right. Like Good show, Aquarius. Wave shut down. We're clear just now, Joe. Roger. Flight, fight him. No fight him. No trim, no nothing. He's good right where he is. Captain Connolly is good right where he is. Where are you, Houston? You're good right where you are. Okay, that's good. Going this direction, I really should be at an odd number flight level, but... Okay, if you're oh, happy... Let's see if we can to, uh, drift up to 31,000. We're happy flight here. Roger. That's permitted, Aquarius. That was Fred Hayes uh, requesting okay, let's watch the over 13 to went over to the uh, service module separation Call. attitude uh, Roger, following this uh, this burn, which looked uh, right on the money. We're at 137 hours. Hey, to, uh, it's an RCS burn. It better be right on the money. <laughs> okay, we're looking at it. And it's a good, that's 30, okay, that's 31,000. Let's try and level out here. Okay. Again, no autopilot as a rule. For the uh, service module separation, uh, Apollo 13 uh, will pitch about uh, 90 degrees along the radio axis. That's uh, 90 degrees off the flight path angle. No, oh, geez, that was too quick. Uh, we show a 13 correction. at the present time at a distance of 37,581 nautical miles away uh, with a velocity of 10,138 feet per second. We're now at uh, one, uh, 137 hours, 42 minutes into the mission. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Fight retro. No retro. No, we still haven't got that empty fan on board. Okay. okay. Flight guys. Go okay. guys. Have it terminate the program on board. He's yeah. still sitting in there. You want him to terminate P41? That's a firm. Captain Tom wants to terminate program 41. Aquarius Houston. The okay, Alpha Controller is moving to the service module separation attitude. Next event's going to be the CSM hot fire. broken into the uh, medical kit for my uh, recommendation to you, Yeah, everything's good, Okay, fine. You might hit it again in about uh, two hours. Okay, sounds good. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll call you Okay, uh, well, we're approaching the Mississippi-Alabama uh, border. That was Donald K. Slayton uh, on the line talking to uh, Jim Lovell. There's a town called Pecan, or Pecan, however you want to pronounce it, pretty close to the border. That, uh, we won't really get a good look at it from up here. Take uh, dexed dexedrine tablets. 
guidance. Let me know when we, we get to the We now show altitude. Apollo 13 at an altitude of uh, 36,969 nautical miles. Flight retro. Go retro. We look real good so far as far as the entry quarter. Okay. Flight and go. Go and go. I'll be coming to you with an omnibus switch in just a second. Okay. Okay, we are now in Alabama, approaching Mobile. We're sort of gently turning to meet up with Interstate 65 now. Which will turn northward. You can see Mobile Bay in front of us. So he said we were at 137 hours. They enter Earth's atmosphere at 142, I believe, so we're about five hours away. Since there's only one flight left from Atlanta to Cape Canaveral, and I'll be in a T-38 incidentally, NASA marked, obviously. And uh, so I don't think we'll get right to the end of the Apollo 13 audio, unfortunately. Especially since I'm including some of the mission control audio as well. So we're flying over Mobile, though there's a lot of clouds, so can't really see it perfectly. You want to go to ping as I hold here, uh, control? Negative, I'd rather stay right where we are. Capcom, we prefer to stay just the way we are. Whole bunch of riverways pouring out into Mobile Bay. We don't want to go into ping as I hold. Oh, he's already there now, fighting over. Let's take a look at it right Some of them doing strange things, too, like meeting up, diverging, and then meeting up again. I guess I saw that strange, but still. That uh, island in the middle of those rivers is called 12 Mile Island. I don't know if it's 12 miles. I don't think so, but <laughs> it doesn't seem that big. So I don't know what's 12 right. miles about it. Roger. But maybe it's 12 miles to Mobile Bay? I don't know. Possibly. Okay, I'm in Pink's Minute Impulse right now while we're firing. Yeah, you just went to Minute Impulse, Mike. You want to leave that? Can I go back to the configuration here? It's his choice right now. Okay. Okay, Jim. Interstate 65 will take us to Montgomery. At which point we'll branch off to Atlanta. I don't know. Looking at the map, I can't tell whether that part is still Interstate 65 or not. 
You can see the interstate between the clouds in front of us. Well, we're a little bit lower than I intended. That was a uh, test of the uh, thrusters on the command module, and as you heard, uh, they all fired. Uh, we're at uh, 137 hours, uh, 58 minutes into the flight, and this is... And now we're too high. Boost. And uh, SM-10 at 138 miles. We're actually catching a bit of Florida here. To our right. Pensacola is somewhere under the clouds. I think there's the stock scenery down below right now. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, we recommend that you use the AGS for the uh, separation maneuver uh, because we'd like to get the proper weight in uh, for the uh, damp before we use the thing. Roger, we will. Roger. Stand by. Yep, we got a little bit of a pause here. Uh, well, you can sort of see why I took pains to get a lot of photo scenery because the stock scenery at these levels looks very repetitive. this little I don't know if it's an antenna or a, a little fin to the right there 
just didn't notice uh, that before. It's the little things. Roger. Capcom, you might advise the crew they'll be coming up on an RCS helium caution line. It'll be a little while with this. We'll be okay, long. Aquarius Houston, uh, recommending to terminate average G. Over. Okay, I've got her, uh, Houston. Beautiful, beautiful, and uh, for your information, Jim, you'll be coming up on an RCS caution light for helium. No sweat, over. And there's one whole side of that big uh, business. Is that right? Yeah, they're finally seeing the service module. They didn't know what the damage actually looked like until now. Right by the, uh, Famous uh, photos right of the service the module antenna, damage. The panel is blown out, almost from the uh, base to the uh, engine. Copy that. How you doing in RCS, sir? Control. I see it. Coming down, coming down. Let's, we're going to let it go just a little longer. Yeah, it looks like a jet to the uh, STS. Well, it's got the baiting needs. Okay, be, be through with the uh, photos. It's the STS engine. Yeah, Tom. Wait, look. He's stabilized now. It looks like fine. Oh, boy. Really a mess. You heard that report from uh, Jim Lovell as. Uh, Roger, I'd like to recommend uh, conserving uh, RCS usage for these photos now. Roger. Okay, Jim, uh, we'd like you to get some pictures, but we want you to conserve RCS, so don't make unnecessary maneuvers. And uh, Jim Houston in particular, of course, we don't want any translation maneuvers. Right on. Now, Joe, you realize that when I uh, went up through the... the as them step attitudes, I had to use the to do it. Oh, that's a firm. We know that. That's okay. Fred Hayes followed Jim's remark uh, with uh, a comment that it got through the uh, service propulsion system bell, too, uh, and it was really a mess. We're at 138 hours, 7 minutes into the flight, Apollo 13 now, 35,200 right miles. Right okay. Stable down there, CS third control? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, Joe, I'm now looking down the SDS bell, and it looks, uh, looks okay on the inside. Maybe this is just straight. Okay, copy that, Fred. Still on our way to Montgomery, about halfway between Montgomery and Mobile right now. Is the bell deformed on the outside, or just uh, nicked, or what? I think the explosion, from what I can see, Joe, had, uh, had changes. I don't know whether it did any actual deformation or not. Okay. I always like the face of the 757. It's a cute face. Go ahead. 
Uh, I know you're busy, but when Jack gets a chance, uh, we'd like that C current and main A voltage in the command module. Jack, Jack, Jack. I, think, I think we're getting to follow scenery up ahead. There's sort of a border there. Say again, you just had a two minute data loss? Negative, I said if we could stand the two minute data loss, I'd like to have both CP recycle. Raj, uh, tell them you're in control. Could you stand a bit of a data loss here? Affirmative. How about That's you, good. guidance? Guidance. Go ahead, point. Raj, uh, clear me for a CP recycle. And that's affirmative. Okay, go ahead. Take more time. Uh, here's the Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. Okay, I have finished up to about 180 degrees now, and uh, do you want me to go to the left step attitude for his alignment? Stand by in there, Jim. Negative one. That was service mode separation attitude. Right, it's the same except in one. Right? So 91 degrees pitch. Okay, it's the, uh, it's the SM step attitude. Aquarius, you can. Go ahead. Roger, we want you to go to the service module step attitude. Okay. And uh, Jim, uh, when you have leisure to copy, I have your uh, noun 46 and noun 47 tap by the low numbers. Up the I'm going to hold off and I'm going to get data back. Okay, we can Okay, go ahead. Now. Okay, okay noun 46, 3, 1, 0, 2, 1. Noun 47, plus. Two, five, Let's check how two, we're doing inside. Four, three, I'm riding the red line there pretty yeah, close, zero, but we're okay. Zero, five, zero. Over. All right, you're three, one, zero, two, one, plus two, five, two, four, eight, plus zero, nine, or zero, five, zero. That's correct. Very shady in here. I don't know what those streaks are. Oh wait, that's the on the other side. When? Oh no, it's over there. Okay, I'm an egg. Interesting. Okay, we concur. Okay, so back to some photo scenery here. Going back to left step. As we get closer to Montgomery. Roger that. Control Houston, uh, 138 hours, uh, 15 minutes down to the mission. Apollo 13 presently 34,350 nautical miles out from Earth, traveling at a speed of 10,607 feet per second. Meanwhile, in the uh, Mission Control Center, uh, the crowd is, is beginning to increase. Uh, already here, uh, Dr. Thomas Payne, uh, NASA Administrator, Mr. George Lowe, uh, NASA Deputy Administrator. Representative uh, George Miller, from California, Chairman of the House Space Committee. Representative Olin Teague, uh, of Texas. It looks like after Montgomery, it's Interstate 85 that we follow to Atlanta. 65 goes up to Birmingham. Okay, uh, have him tell us what he, what he looks at. And remind him that he uh, won't see the light. He won't see the standby okay. light because it's not powered. Uh, Joe. Oh. Go ahead, Joe, Jack. Uh, okay, I get a flashing 37. I am in program 06. There is no standby light, but when I enter, I don't get the three ball 62 display like I was supposed to. Copy, guys. Stand, yeah, stand by. Okay, and guys, this, here Go ahead. And this occurs on both disks. Okay, understand. We're uh, we're thinking about it. Flight guy, go guys. We'd like we want him to reselect 06 with verb 37. Verb 37 enter. Zero 06 enter. Okay. Okay, uh, Jack Houston, we'd like you to uh, go verb GMC 37 enter. Zero 06 enter GMC. again. Are we an hour ahead of our profile here? Okay, Captain inward. Flight. Okay. Continuing with. Uh, 
Bill is present in the control center now, uh, Representative uh, Jerry Pettis of California. General Phillips, uh, who was previously the uh, Apollo program director. George Miller, also a NASA alumni, uh, formerly uh, associate administrator uh, for manned space flight. Okay, that is Montgomery, and, uh, Alabama. Uh, Rusty Schweikert are among the astronauts in the viewing room at the present time, along with uh, Buzz Aldrin. Dr. Ebert Hart. Reese, uh, director of the Marshall Space Flight Center, is uh, in the viewing room, as is Dale Myers, uh, associate administrator for Ecom manned space flight, flight uh, at present. Ecom Mr. Walter Capri, uh, director of launch Ecom. operations at Kennedy Space Center. Okay, and we'll turn a bit to the right to Dr. go to Atlanta. He was, uh, director of uh, Kennedy Space Center, is in the viewing room, as is... Uh, Lou Evans, uh, president of Grumman. Okay, here's the mom back in the uh, uh, service module step attitude. Okay, copy that, Jim. Looks good. Oh, I think it's actually uh, loading you know Atlanta it's now. Any pictures out of window five? Was it still parked up over? I don't think We're not so. that far away. Down here because I think you saw it first uh, in, uh, in the left. Okay, thank you. And uh, whenever you get uh, cleaned up, uh, we got the entry pad and the uh, landing area assembled for you. How's he doing on the computer, Capcom? No further word yet. Jack is in the seat I'm working on. Okay. Okay, Vance, this is Jack. Go ahead. Okay, uh, during a verb 37 enter, 06 enter does bring up the three ball 62 display but I can't proceed on it on either disk key, and a verb 33 doesn't work either. Stand by flight okay. And still, uh, just, just a flashing uh, 5025 with a code uh, 00062. Okay, copy that, Jack. Uh, stand by one. Needless to say, all of the distinguished visitors uh, in the control center were most interested in the report uh, from Apollo 13 of the service module condition. As uh, the 13 crew moved away following the jets. Uh, Jack Houston, how long did you hold proceed before you quit on it? Flight Okay, let's see the map. Uh, there's that cluster of airfields around Atlanta. There's Atlanta. Still a ways away, but we could start descending back over stock scenery here for a little bit. Obviously, there will be photo scenery around Atlanta. The reason we put it in at the time it was because of some... Okay, Jack just came down the tunnel again and said the computer's okay. Okay, good to hear it. Copy, the computer's okay. And, uh, did you ever get that bet? Yeah, I think we'll start descending. The number you're using. I guess the heat of the battle, I forgot to give it to you, I guess. Stand by. Okay. Bad C current with 2 amps and bad A voltage 30.2. Copy, 2 amps, 30.2. Sounds good, Mike. 30.2. And that sounds good to us, Jim. Capcom for flight. Go flight. Might be uh, worthwhile telling him to uh, hold off on any further CSM activation item. It's still 2.30 here. Go we'll uh, Ecom. Go Ecom. Also verify the pyros and logic space. Raj, also verify pyros and logic space. Okay. Aquarius Houston. Go ahead. 
Okay, uh, we'd like to have Jack uh, verify uh, that the pyros and logic are safe. And uh, we'd like to remind him to do no further power up of the CSM until uh, EI minus 2 plus 30. Roger, he reports that the pyros are safe and we're standing by for 2.30. Okay, real good. FD, you want to take it a minute? Roger that, Blank. Well, I can't say that this leak hasn't been filled with excitement. <laughs> well, uh, James, if uh, you can't take any better care of a spacecraft than that, we might not give you another one. Hey, uh, uh, Jim Houston, uh, you might ask Jack while he's down there to take a peek through the telescope and uh, tell us whether he can see any stars, over. Okay. That time earlier identified at 2 hours and 30 minutes is the uh, time in the flight plan that uh, the command module batteries will be brought on the line. In a uh, normal mission, uh, the batteries would not uh, be brought up until some thir 30 minutes uh, prior to uh, entry into the Earth's atmosphere. We show Apollo 13 presently uh, 33,369 nautical miles away. Velocity now reading 10,757 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. No, that's photo scenery uh, to the left there. That, uh, there's still a lot of particles floating around, and he's, uh, he can't pick out any constellations that he recognizes so far. So it might quit here in a little while. Okay, I understand. Uh, flight Capcom. Go Capcom. Get the feeling from the photo scenery that this area is not quite so foresty as the stock scenery makes it out to be. Circuit breakers and switches that he does expect closed at this time. Okay, John, could you go back through the uh, previous? I mean, not completely lacking in trees, but just uh, this is much more solidly forest. Yeah, he shouldn't be drawing any power off there, should he? John? That's firm by just down in the noise. Yeah. John, you might have one of your backroom guys go through that baseline configure. Let's see that baseline. They're going through the okay. Go we come. Yeah, the other one's checked in red. You're like to check. There's about five items. Okay. Why don't you give it a tap now? Tell him you can fly. Tell him you. Roger. Uh, how do you think the uh, current profile you've got now compares with what you expect to be providing the CSM at this time? It's very slightly higher than what we expected right now, but it's no problem. We're okay. Okay. That lake in front of us is West Point Lake, and that is sort of right on the boundary between Alabama and Georgia. On that, on that question, yeah, the, the two amps doesn't sound bad, but the main bus voltage of 30.2 indicates you are drawing two or three amps. 
Okay, we'll do. Okay, Joe, this is Jack. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I'm not reading any voltage at all on that C, and the amperage looks like about 2 amps, but that could be uh, kind of noise level stuff. I've got all the floodlights off, and I, I, can you think of anything else like to power down to lower main A? Okay, I'm not reading the uh, voltage off on main A. Okay, oh, this is Ken. Okay, Ken, uh, it was 30.2. Okay. Uh, we're checking out the floodlights we gave you. Actually, uh, Jack, you ought to be able to go ahead and uh, use the lights we gave you. There's no reason to sit in the dark. They're supposed to be coming off of main B. We're checking that now. Okay, uh, it's not uh, it's not bad down there. Uh, we're, it's got plenty of light. But uh, should I be reading a voltage on that C? Flatty gun, that circuit breaker is open. Use the main A voltage. Roger. That circuit breaker is open, Capcom. That's firm. You should not be because the circuit breaker is open. Uh, Jack, uh, you should be reading uh, that C voltage. That circuit breaker should be open. Okay. Okay, can you think of anything else you want to get turned off to lighten the load on uh, main A? Okay, yeah, uh, we're uh, through the right now. That's uh, the good uh, Not that big a Go ahead, A cop. Don't even think of it. Something GNC's bringing up. Okay. We've got ring one selected to main A. It shouldn't draw that much current. Okay. 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 GNC, you got any ideas there? Uh, only those auto coil flight. We can't turn those off to find out if they're fixed. Well, that might be a good idea to try uh, e -com. That might be a good idea to turn the auto coils off to see if that's done. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 138 yes. hours and 38 one, minutes one into the flight. Okay, Aquarius. Okay, Go ahead. we are uh, 34 nautical, nautical miles from Atlanta, the airport. Okay. The uh, flight dynamics officer has uh, just reported to flight uh, director Gene Krantz that initial tracking following the uh, mid-course burn shows that uh, that burn was performed uh, precisely as planned. We're at uh, 138 hours, uh, 39 minutes into the flight, Apollo 13, uh, now 32,000. Right, retro. 12 Go nautical retro miles right away. This pad, we're not, some of this data we're not going to send up on the With a velocity of 10,982 feet per second, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Capcom, I guess it's about time to read up the entry pad here. <laughs> 
the controller kept bugging them about reading up the entry pad finally got his way. <laughs> the pad is just the numbers that they have to enter into the computer. I guess he says it's down in the mud, it's less than two amps. Down in the mud, okay, I understand that. Uh, Why the camera's pressing on? Request you the uh, heat turn back on. Set firm ring one lane, Roger. And, uh... Okay, I'm going to bring the auto coils back on ring one main A, Capcom. Okay, Jim, that's the auto coils back on ring one main A. And when you get that done, I'd like you to copy the entry pad. Okay, Joe, Obviously, there'd be lots of clouds. <laughs> okay, here we of come. course. Performance has zero, been pretty good, zero, though. Zero, this is a complicated one, plane, a sophisticated five, plane, but zero, certainly zero, not one zero. that produces a lot of lag. The next two lines will be the GET of moon set and the moon check attitude. One, four, two, three, eight. One seven, one seven eight. Now sixty one minus two one six six minus one six five three seven zero. Six, you can still see. Seven, well, I don't think that's three, Interstate six, sixty five. Two, it's actually one, one, more directly below us. Six five one. one oh, there it is. One six eight nine. Three six two niner two one four two four zero four zero 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 two eight. The next four are in slash A. B sub zero is four zero 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 two zero four. Lots of stuff sparkling zero, down zero, there. One, seven. Zero, three, Don't know what all that's two, about. Two, zero, eight, one, four, three, 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 five, three, one, two, niner, niner. Foresight star is Sigma Libra. Down, zero, eight, eight. Left, zero, four. Lift vector up. Comment. GDC for entry alignment. Stars 3 1 and 2 3. The roll align 0 4 1. Pitch 2 4 5. Yaw 0 2 4. Use EMS non-exit pattern. Maintain moon check attitude until moon set. Then go to entry attitude or track horizon with the 36 degree window mark. Well, I think Last we see time. some of the buildings at Atlanta there. And that's the airport. Since we're probably definitely gonna fly south from here, and the airport's on the southern end of the city, I think we'll fly over the city first. Because we'll just be heading south afterwards, and this has been a relatively short flight. Uh, Zebra Libra, or something like that. 
like that. Beta Libra is down 0.8.8, left 0.4. Let's make her up. GDC NC aligned to star 3133. Roll 041, pitch 045, yaw 024. EMS non exit pattern to be used. Maintain smooth check attitude until moon set. And the ball else is lost. The constant G entry is right, uh, rolling right. Okay, uh, Roger that, Jim. I want to verify a couple things. I'm not sure I heard you read back. The first one was the uh, Zebra Libra. <laughs> That's uh, Sigma Libra. Uh, the uh, set stars 3 1 and 2 3. Did you get that over? Okay, no, I had 3 1 and 3 3, and uh, I got Sigma Libra now, and uh, the 3 1 and 2 3 for the set star. Okay, and your uh, GDC pitch align, I, I wasn't sure whether that was. Uh, whether you read back 245 or 045, the correct number is 245, over. Good show, because I have 045 down. 245. Okay. Funny that and he got uh, Sigma the, and the, the Zebra mixed up. Here, Libra and, and uh, Zebra sound uh, really close to each other. Maybe they should reconsider that for the phonetic that. alphabet. So downtown Atlanta. First check on the 30 degree window mark. That's the 36 three degree window mark, Jim. 36, Roger. Okay, and three clouds, six, great. <laughs> and Aquarius Houston, uh, if you want me to read you the landing area summary, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, just a thin South cloud red. layer. Okay, in the mid-Pacific landing area, the weather is good. I don't know about that really tall building. That strikes me as maybe an autogen mistake, but I'm not sure. Wind 060 at 10. Wave heights are 4 feet. And uh, the altimeter 29 or 86, if you care. Very uh, sprawling place. Scattered showers less than 10% of the area. The recovery forces are as follows. The Iwo Jima will be at the uh, touchdown point. The uh, aircraft call sign will be Recovery 1. On station with swimmers on board. The, uh, we have the Constant G backup reentry area covered with the USS Hall, the good uh, Liberty ship. <laughs> they just and figured out uh, what the, the USS other, Hall uh, was in the previous video. Our Samoa Rescue C 130. Okay, fine. We have the Iwo Jima as the prime recovery ship. That's correct. Uh, Joe, Jack tells me he's still having trouble looking uh, to the optics, so I'm just going to pitch up a little bit more here to find, see if he has a dark right. spot. That okay, is uh, real fine. You might uh, tell him that uh, when we get to that point, yeah, we have some... Uh, with some stars with corresponding shaft and trunnion angles to pass to him as backup in case the, uh, the computer doesn't have to point him straight at one. And it's the summer triangle. Okay, we got two options. I think that's, uh, we ought to try this SCS Logic Power 2-3 as much as it's called back out in the checklist at 110, right? And are you tracking us and do you have the results of that last minute course? Uh, stand by. It looks you good. got the I'll SCS Logic Power 2-3 called out again at 110, right? Right. Okay. So we could open that and leave that open and it'll be closed again at 110. Now, what other switch do you want to check? The CMRC has heater switch. Flight. Go ahead, Capcom. While I'm calling up the, uh, the heater switches, him, uh, he asked about the uh, tracking and results of the mid-course, if we have anything to... Uh, yeah, uh, last report I got was mid-course looked good. Again. We got him nailed within a half a foot per second. Roger. Go ahead, Aquarius. I just said, Joe, it feels nice to use the hand controller again. Oh, roger that. Uh, Fido says he's got you nailed within a half a foot per second. Uh, the mid-course looked real good. Okay. And uh, I've got... Uh, Two things we'd like Jack to do in the command module uh, to uh, ease the load on uh, main A. One of them is to verify or turn the CMRCS heater switch to off. 
we're done with that, and even though the circuit breakers are pulled, the, uh, the switches might be drawing a little current. And the second one is we'd like him to turn FCS logic power 2 slash 3 to off. We don't need it now. It's called up in the checklist at the appropriate time, and uh, we'd like him to turn that off. Over. Okay, I'll tell uh, Jack to uh, check that the uh, CMRCS heater switch is off, and now we'll turn it off. And also to turn off the SDS logic power uh, 2 slash 3 switch off, this is just up later in the checklist. That's correct. Okay, well, I think I should get into the cockpit. It's, Apollo control, Houston. it's a uh, nice heard, cockpit uh, anyway. The entry pad uh, being passed up to Apollo 13, this pad based on the uh, last mid-course. Let's uh, quickly summarize uh, the meaning of some of those numbers. We're presently looking at uh, Houston, splash Aquarius, coordinates. Uh, we're recording main A voltage at the 31.0. 21.66 south latitude, 165.37 west latitude, or longitude, max G of uh, 6.7, velocity at entry interface of uh, 36,211 feet per second, and an entry angle of minus 6.51. Time of uh, entry interface, uh, 142 hours, 40 minutes, 40 seconds, ground elapsed time. Begin Sorry for adjusting my uh, headphones there. Seconds, uh, I'm sure, interface. given and that this is unedited uh, minutes, seconds, stuff, I capture a lot of weird of sounds that I make. At uh, 8 minutes, 14 seconds. Our digital display now shows Apollo 13 at a distance of 30,226 nautical miles away uh, with a velocity of 11,290 feet per second. Okay. We're at uh, 138 hours, 56 minutes into the flight and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Flight control. Control control. As a matter of interest, the usage rate in this control mode is about a half a percent per hour. Okay. Flight Capcom. So oh, Capcom. Uh, flight in case when we go into the uh, the P-52 in the command module, in case he can't see the stars, I'd like to have the uh, the moon view and sun view attitudes uh, here on the console. Hmm. So I got him right here. Flight. Okay. Guidance. Why don't you give them to him? Uh, lots of sparkly lights that aren't the runway. Uh, here's for the bird. Okay. Go here down. Okay, uh, how about if I hold a uh, first notch of flaps? About 115 instead of about uh, 91. I think Jack could uh, use the object a little bit better at that angle. How about that guy? Sorry, Mike, just so we. Uh, Jim, no, uh, uh, that's yeah, perfectly yeah. okay with us uh, if it looks good for stars. Let's take a look. Alright. I'm going to have to look at it a little bit better here. Okay, uh, uh, with the new attitude, our uh, shaft and trunnion angles, we were going to pass them, don't uh, mean anything. Okay, but I see the runways there. I am too low. Okay, what we got to do is settle More down flaps. an attitude that's going to give the CSM optics a good star field. Okay, Once he gets that, that's looking good. Then we'll use that as our attitude to start computing the data from. Okay, what was Roger. No, we'll pre-compute it to get one up Oh the shoot, I mistook okay. the taxiway for the runway and, again. Uh, let me review what I'm going to tell him. Happened right, so I'm often. Tell him that we're going to compute the CSM course aligned gimbal angles for him early. If he can select for us an attitude that looks good for the P-52, go to that attitude and hold it. Call a Verbo 6 now 20 and read us the LEM gimbal angles. We will then compute CSM gimbal angles for him and expect him to be at the same attitude when we start the CSM course align. That's affirmative. Okay. Correct guidance for our flight. Aquarius, Houston. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Jim, uh, we, uh, we've been talking about your uh, 
going to a, a different attitude than the uh, than the pad attitude for better star field vision out the command module. And uh, what we'd like to have you do is this: if you can uh, predict now or sometime soon uh, what attitude it is that you'd like to hold at that time, and then go to that attitude now. We'd like to be able to compute the course aligned gimbal angles for the CSM. And we can do that if you go to the selected attitude, okay. hold it, call up a Verbo 6 noun 20, and read us your LEM gimbal angles. We can take those and compute CSM course aligned gimbal angles on the assumption and that reverse it off. Back into the CSM course aligned, you will return to that selected attitude. And that okay? let's turn this taxiway. Yeah, I think uh, it's okay, uh, maybe. Hold, uh, the <laughs> I don't know the layout right. of Atlanta's uh, airport well, here. Alright, outside view. Okay, you can take some time figuring out the, the uh, best attitude. Okay, the well, I don't know where I'm going. This seems like a sharp turn. There's some hangars uh, there. Said, uh, Looks more like a maintenance area Atlanta, for Delta or something. Or FedEx, uh, whatever. Anyway, we have arrived in Atlanta, and next flight will be the last flight. It will be to Cape Canaveral again, where we started, and that will complete 80 flights with 80 different planes. Okay, so got pause right there on the audio as I awkwardly go across the runway here and continue to taxi. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.